According to the defense, Terrell had been sleepwalking since he was six years old. Although the evidence was stacked against Terrell, his lawyer was clever and relentless. The defense began their case by attacking Bickford's reputation, insisting that Terrell had been a reputable man before meeting her. Choke and his co-counsel Annis Merrill argued that no one had seen Terrell kill Bickford and that he had no motive. The defense went on to offer three different possibilities for what really happened. According to Cho and Merrill, Bickford may have killed herself. But this was highly unlikely given the extent of her wounds. Choates then suggested that someone else could have killed Bickford. Plausible since no one saw the actual murder. He then offered a third potential scenario in which Turrell did kill Bickford. But did so in his sleep, therefore he could not be held accountable for actions that occurred while unconscious. Turrell was put on trial for Bickford's murder in 1846. Turrell was sent back to Boston for trial. By the time Turrell got back to Massachusetts, the case was receiving local and national attention. Public opinion had turned against Turrell in large part because he fled. Rufus Choate, a supporter and disciple of Daniel Webster, Choate had built himself a reputation as a former politician and a popular orator as well as a successful lawyer. The prosecution opened up the case against Turrell on March 26, 1846 in front of a three-judge panel. Witnesses testified that Turrell had been at the brothel to see Bickford on the 27th of October. Turrell fled and tried to escape the country. Turrell, who had been seen at the brothel earlier in the day, was nowhere to be found. The evidence indicated that he had been the one to commit the crimes. There was a man's vest and cane at the scene. A witness later said that he saw Turrell at the stable bargaining because he was in a scrap and needed to get away. On October 28, Turrell returned to Massachusetts before heading to Vermont on his way to Canada. Once he got to Montreal, he wrote to tell his family that he was going to Liverpool. He boarded a ship but rough weather forced it to return to New York City. From New York, he took another ship to New Orleans. Turrell never made it to New Orleans because he was arrested on a boat in the Gulf of Mexico on or around December 5 or 6, 1845. Turrell had been arrested for adultery before his lover was found murdered. In 1845, Turrell was arrested for adultery and lascivious cohabitation, and the two split up. Turrell's wife had brought the charges against him, and the penalty could have been up to six months in prison, but he talked her into dropping them, begging her in public and promising to observe propriety in his behavior. When he got out on bail, he reportedly may have returned home briefly but then went back to the brothel to see Bigford. This was the same day that her body was later found. Earl had left his wife and children for a tumultuous affair with a prostitute. 22-year-old Albert Turrell was the son of a Weymouth, Massachusetts shoemaker who had also worked in state politics. Turrell was married and had two children already but was known for his reckless behavior. When his father died in 1844, Turrell inherited zero, most of which he spent on the girlfriend with whom he was having an affair behind his family's back. Turrell had left his wife and children for Maria Bickford in 1845. Bickford was a sex worker in Boston, catering to high-class clients and living in a brothel. She did quite well for herself and was able to live with a maid and expensive wardrobe. 
Pearl was madly in love with her and moved to Boston to be close to her. Soon the two were living together and acting as a married couple. However, once Turtle and Bigford were living together, they began fighting, notably because Bigford didn't want to give up her profession. At one point, Bigford wrote to James in Maine and told him that Turtle was beating her, but she also told a fellow boarder that she liked fighting with Turtle because they had such a good time making up. Pearl's lover was found murdered with her head almost completely severed. It's unclear exactly what happened on the night of October 27, 1845, but in the still dark early morning, the owner of a brothel, Joel Lawrence, woke up to multiple fires ablaze throughout the establishment. He fortunately had time put out the fires, then discovered one worker's body, that of Maria Bickford. Her neck was slit from ear to ear and she was nearly decapitated. Her throat had been cut with a razor, which was found near her body, and her hair was singed by the fires. Eyewitnesses said that earlier in the evening, they had seen Bickford's lover, the 22-year-old Albert Turrell, enter and leave the brothel where his lover lived. He became an instant suspect, particularly when it turned out he disappeared. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.